Is the move done? Don't tell me you're backing out now. I'll be leaving today. Aw, oh, I'm gonna miss you. Thoughts of losing my stress escape are bumming me out. After saying what she wanted, my sister-in-law Mandy hung up the phone. Seeing her go from on top of the world to feeling low was something I was really looking forward to. My name is Alyssa, and I'm 29 years old. Currently, I live in a spacious apartment close to the city center with my parents. Until a year ago, I was married. However, my husband's affair led to our divorce, and I returned back to my parents' house, now a divorcee. At that time, considering our old cramped house, I saw it as a good opportunity to move. Thus, I relocated to the apartment where I live now with my parents. I have an older brother, Jim, who is three years my senior. He left our family home quite some time ago. When we moved into the apartment, he commented on how petty it was to buy an apartment with a divorce settlement. Regardless, I enjoy a comfortable life with my parents. I work remotely, and so far, I haven't faced any inconveniences. Jim hardly ever visits home, and it seems he doesn't even update our parents about his life. Although he works at a company, I don't really know the details. Occasionally, I call him to update him on our parents and myself, but he always seems disinterested and ends the call quickly. Honestly, I'm not sure if he can really be considered the oldest son in our family. Little did I know, Jim would soon bring an astounding problem to our family. One day, I received a rare call from him. Wondering what was going on, I answered the phone. And Jim, what's up? I asked. His unexpected response was filled with pride. Oh, I'm getting married. I was shocked and exclaimed loudly. Jim had always been single, and I've never heard him talk about any romantic stuff. I had assumed he would remain single for life. Who? Who are you marrying? Uh, someone from work. I'll bring her over next holiday, so let mom and dad know. See ya. After saying that, he hung up the phone. For a while, I stood there, stunned, wondering what kind of woman he was marrying. Jim's not the easiest guy to deal with, and he's not the most financially savvy. Whoever's with him must be a pro at keeping things steady. Well, he said he would bring her over next holiday, so I would find out then. Feeling a mix of anxiety and worry, I awaited the next holiday. On Sunday, Jim visited our home with his fiance. This is Mandy. My fiancé. Mandy, my future sister-in-law, was looking all glammed up with her makeup, and she greeted my parents and I with a grin. Then she said, You must be his sister. I've heard about you. Surprised, I asked, What have you heard? She replied with a meaningful smile. Oh, various things. This left me feeling uneasy, and I couldn't shake off the feeling afterwards. However, Mandy and Jim were very interested in our apartment, saying, Was this apartment always this spacious? And, Wow, what a lovely apartment. My parents were puzzled by their behavior. Eventually, after touring the apartment, they left, saying they would visit again. Three days later, Jim announced that he and Mandy had registered their marriage. A couple of things just didn't sit well with me. Even though they were throwing shade at my divorce, they didn't seem to plan on having a wedding ceremony. I found it kind of strange that the ones who always worry about what others think didn't have a ceremony. Jim had been working for a long time, and Mandy worked at the same company, so they should have some savings. When I asked Jim, he said, It's a busy time right now. We plan to have it once things settle down. I was somewhat convinced, but what really concerned me was his text message. Be home next holiday. I have something important to discuss. Jim's mention of the important conversation left me with a sense of unease. I started my day off feeling a bit uneasy. On the next holiday, Jim brought Mandy to our parents' house. He wasted no time and said something shocking. Actually, we're thinking of living in this house. This caught both my parents and me by surprise. Mandy, smiling, said, well, this house is so spacious, isn't it? And there's that large, unused room. If we could use that room, that would be enough for us. It would be helpful for you, father-in-law and mother-in-law, to have someone around to help out. 
right? When I hurriedly replied, that spare room is for guests, my brother interjected. Guests? Do they even come to this house? It looks like it's not being used at all. It wouldn't be a problem for us to use it, right? But... Alyssa? Mandy suddenly called my name, cutting me off. Actually, it's strange for you to be living in this house, isn't it? Do you think you have the right to refuse us living here? Despite her smile, Mandy's words were filled with pressure. Was this the malice I had been fearing from her? Without her consent, my brother and Mandy started bringing their belongings into the house the very next day. Soon the house was filled with their stuff. Looks like it's going to be cramped with all our stuff here, Jim remarked. Right. If only there was a room to store our stuff. Oh, isn't there an unused room? Mandy suggested. An unused room? You know, the room of that lazy, good-for-nothing sister-in-law who doesn't work and just lazes around at home all day. Ah, I see. I could hear everything they were saying and laughing about in my room. They were probably making sure I could hear them. Mandy started to harass me, not just as a sister-in-law, but more. At mealtimes, Mandy would hurl insults at me like, Aren't you ashamed of living holed up at home at your age? Why don't you try earning some money for once? I started taking my meals to my room to eat alone. This only led to me spending more time in my room, which made Mandy more annoyed at me. I had assumed that since Jim and his wife were living with us, they would be contributing to the household expenses. However, it turned out they hadn't contributed a single penny. Shocked, I said, can't you at least contribute some money for living expenses? You're the eldest son, right? To this, Jim and his wife retorted. You're not doing anything yourself, so don't you dare talk back. Be grateful we're living with you. Besides, if we give money to your parents, part of it would go to your living expenses, wouldn't it? Why should we have to pay for you too? Plus, at your age, being a divorced, unemployed single person living with your parents... How can you even show your face in society? Aren't you ashamed to be living here? They completely dismissed my concerns. It hit me that it was a lost cause, so I sighed. It seemed my brother and his wife spent all their earnings on themselves. One evening, as I was about to take a bath, I ran into Mandy. She exclaimed, Hey, you weren't thinking of going before me, were you? Why should I go after you? I left the spot without a word. Offended by being ignored, Mandy yelled at my back. How much longer do you intend to stay here? It's time you left. Don't live here like a freeloader, you trash. Her words finally made up my mind. I wouldn't let this go. I heard from my parents that Jim and his wife were planning a trip to Miami for a week. Seeing my chance, I informed them I would move out while they were away. Hearing this, Jim and his wife were overjoyed, saying, Finally leaving, huh? Make sure you don't leave any unnecessary stuff behind and just get out quickly. Alyssa, you're moving out? Oh, I'm so sad. Just kidding. About time, right? Having someone like you around is just toxic. Hurry up and leave. Before announcing my move, I had made a proposal to my parents, who, after initial shock, listened seriously and eventually agreed. I let Jim and his wife know that the transfer of the apartment's ownership from me to him had to be finalized before my move. He agreed readily, and the process was completed without any issue. Now, all rights to the apartment were Jim's. And off they went on their trip, all smiles and excitement. Well then, let's get moving. I was just as excited about moving as Jim and his wife had been. I moved out all the things I had bought and took them to my new home. During the move, I received a call from Mandy. Is the move done? Don't tell me you're backing out now. I'll be leaving today. Ah, I'm going to miss you. Thoughts of losing my stress escape are bumming me out. After saying what she wanted, Mandy hung up the phone. Seeing her go from on top of the world to feeling low was something I was really looking forward to. The move was completed without any issues. 
Leaving that apartment felt sad, but it was no longer the apartment where I had happily lived with my parents. I decided to start fresh and began unpacking at my new place. A week later, my phone rang. It was from Jim. I didn't pick up because I knew what he would say. He called several more times, but I ignored them, and eventually it stopped. However, shortly after, Mandy began calling repeatedly. I gave in and answered the phone, getting sick of it ringing over and over again. Hello? Mandy was almost hysterical, saying, What is going on? Where are my in laws? And what's with this apartment's rent? What do you do for a living? I sighed deeply before saying, Please, one question at a time. Mandy then shouted into the phone, What's happening? Where have my in laws gone? My parents? They're here with me. They moved with me. It wasn't by force. They were sick of you taking their pension. But there's no furniture or appliances. Where did they go? I brought them with me. They're all mine since I was the one who bought them. And just so you know, Jim was the one who told me not to leave anything unnecessary behind. How are we supposed to live in a place with nothing left? You're both adults. You should be able to buy your own living essentials. You work, so you must have the money, right? In this apartment? Why is there a mortgage? It was supposed to be fully paid for with your divorce settlement, wasn't it? That was a misunderstanding on your part. I put down a down payment with my own money and took out a mortgage for the apartment. I didn't receive any compensation for my divorce. It's a $1,000 a month mortgage. What? $1,000 monthly? And by the way, I have connections with the apartments designer and the real estate agent through my work, and they kindly offered me a discount. But since I've transferred the ownership to Jim, I thought it would be rude to keep it at a discounted price. So I had it reassessed at its original value. But starting next month, the mortgage payments will be $3,500 per month. $3,500? That can't be. You're joking, right? You should know that such a spacious and well located apartment can't possibly be bought outright, even with my divorce settlement. You should use some common sense. I could tell, even over the phone, that Mandy's face was turning pale. Both you and Jim work at good companies, so paying it shouldn't be impossible, right? If you can't, you might have to sell it, though I think you'll end up at a loss. What do you do for a living? You were the ones who decided I was unemployed or a shut-in. I work, actually. I'm a designer in the architecture field, working from home. I'm financially stable enough to handle an unexpected move and buy a new apartment. Why did you keep quiet about this? Come back right now. Without your help, what are we supposed to do? We'll let you live here with us. Mandy kept yelling at me from her high horse. At this point, what she said hardly mattered to me anymore. I could still hear Mandy's shouting voice as I hung up the phone. Then, I immediately blocked Jim and Mandy's phone numbers. Word on the street is that Jim and Mandy were both hooked on gambling before they got hitched, and ended up going bankrupt because of it. They got into a ton of debt and couldn't keep up with paying for their place, so they had to move out. When they came begging for money to our apartment, they assumed it was a great property and that I had already purchased it, leading them to believe they wouldn't need to pay rent. That's why they forced their way into living with us. It was always a mystery to me why those two, who were all about their image, never had a wedding. But it turns out, they were broke. Of course, they spent their salaries on gambling without contributing to household utilities, relying on our parents pensions instead. They didn't stop there, they even took our parents' pensions to fuel their gambling habits. Given the situation, it was natural for my parents to agree with my suggestion to move out and live in a new apartment away from Jim and his wife. We decided to let go of that apartment, considering it a loss, and purchased a new comfortable one. Furthermore, the new apartment was actually designed by me, and thanks to my connections, I was able to purchase it at a third of the price. I managed to buy it without needing a mortgage at all. 
Later, I found out that Jim and Mandy ended up not being able to cover the rent and had to sell the apartment. However, they still have a long way to go in paying off the mortgage. Now, homeless, the two moved into a rundown cheap apartment. Still obsessed with their looks, they always wear luxury items despite their dire financial situation, leaving no room for a comfortable life as they struggle with mortgages and debts. Apparently, someone spotted them grabbing a bunch of bread crusts from a bakery not too long ago. It's terrifying to imagine what their life has become. Meanwhile, my parents and I have been enjoying our peaceful days. Our new apartment is comfortable. My job is going smoothly and we have no problems. Despite receiving numerous calls from unknown numbers, which I assume were from Jim or Mandy, I never answered. Last week, I changed my phone number. Now, there's no way for Jim or Mandy to contact me. I'm looking forward to cherishing calm days with my parents in our newly adopted home. <laughs>